another response to Fede. Uh, this one um, might take a bit, uh, a couple of videos, although I don't know. It has to do with um, taboo violation, ethics by denunciation, and political correctness, I guess you'd call it, um, in the bad sense of the term. Here I am in no way referring to an actual sincere attempt to eradicate things like racism and sexism, homophobia, uh, whatever, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, whatever. I'm not talking about the sincere sort. Um, <clears throat> uh, in, in that sort of context, one would assume that in the sincere sort of context, one would assume that somebody um, or a group or an organization has detected what they sincerely believe to be, say, sexism, since I think that's what uh, the context of this is, and they want to do something about it. They want to eliminate sexism. If that means, I don't know, frying an individual, they're willing to do it, but once they've made their point, they're willing to take the boot off the throat and to sort of say, okay, we've, we've got it, we've got, made our point here, and you're completely made whole, and you've done your time, whatever, and let's get back to normal here. The problem isn't you personally, the problem is racism or sexism itself. Let's stick to sexism. Um, <clears throat> what, I'm, what I'm concerned with here is the, the bogus stuff, which you, you can't really prove that it's bogus, but in many cases you sort of get the impression that people are using, say, political correctness to sort of justify their own bigotries. Um, again, you can't prove it, but you kind of feel like you, you get this vibe when, when you think that it's happening. Say, since we're talking about sexism, uh, you get somebody who's actually just, um, just hates men, let's say, or has it in for you personally. Uh, they don't like you. You irritate them in some way, and they're going to get you, and they latch on to this idea of sexism and they can fry you with this because they know that our society sees uh, blatant sexism as a taboo. We see this as something that we're almost irrationally, and I don't mean illogically or stupidly opposed to, but I mean sort of viscerally opposed to. Um, overt racism and sexism in our society are essentially taboos. Uh, you don't do that kind of thing. <clears throat> It doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but it, it has taken on the dimensions of, uh, of a taboo. So if somebody is deliberately trying to bludgeon you with um, the label, I guess, of taboo violator um, in bad faith, um, that's the sort of political correctness gone mad that a lot of people believe is rampant in our society. I'm not so sure about that. Or at least I don't think it's as dangerous as some people might think. Uh, I split the the political correctness stuff or the totalitarian variant thereof into sort of two uh, components. There's the unofficial and the official one. Um, the unofficial one is they're just going after you. They're trying to upset you. They're trying to make you look bad. They're trying to um, make you look stupid, but it's just essentially they're casting aspersions and they're not taking concrete action against you. And they may, may even know that they don't have a case to take concrete action against you, but they want to upset you. They want you to make, they want to make you feel weak the way that they feel. Um, it's kind of Nietzsche and ressentiment. You know, you, you're, you're the weak person, so you want to denounce the strong person or at least make them weak like you instead of you making yourself strong. <clears throat> that's, the, um, that's the unofficial kind, where there's no real sanctions, you're just your character is being attacked. Uh, the official kind is much more serious, and I tend, to, um, I tend to regard these sorts of things as declarations of war. Again, I'm not referring to an actual investigation of somebody who has legitimate concerns about sexism. I'm talking about somebody who may have a personal grudge, or may have a bigotry of their own, i.e. Um, uh, androphobia, or I don't know what it is, hatred of men, phallophobia, or something, I don't know. But they may actually dislike men, or they may actually dislike men who seem too cocky, or something like this, and they're going to take a piece out of you. And they're going to 
actually avail themselves of the law or of the human rights regulations in your workplace or something like this. You could end up in handcuffs. You could end up in a nasty custody dispute. You could end up uh, losing your job or just getting disciplined or something like that. That's the official. I tend to approach these things somewhat differently, although they're similar. But, you know, the unofficial one is, you know, you you just get a, a vibe and all you're really interested in is is dealing with the arguments and saying, go, go away to whoever is denouncing you. Um, the main thing is you have to understand what they're trying to do if you believe that this is what's happening. If they're trying to put you on the defensive and make you feel um, weak or trying to upset you or throw you off balance or something like that, the first thing is you never let them see you get that way. Even if they have upset you, don't ever let them see it. Don't ever let them see you get angry. Don't ever let them see you... Um, um, start to second guess yourself. Don't get that look like, oh, I've been blindsided. Oh my God, that makes me mad. Because, you know, that's you're, you're walking right into their trap. Um, understand what this sort of thing is. And I guess it's best to sort of anticipate this sort of thing. Um, if you think that it's going to happen, you have to size the situation up in your own mind and think rather quickly. What's this person trying to do? Um, if you believe that somebody's trying to put you on the defensive and, and accuse you of something... Um, even if they're just sort of doing it surreptitiously or obliquely, you have to bear in mind that that's always possible, especially when you're talking to people into a webcam that you're then going to publish on YouTube. Somebody is going to attack you. Uh, somebody's going to try to put you on the defensive. Somebody's going to try to impugn your motives and your character. They're going to try and, since we're talking about sexism here, they're going to try and throw some mud at you, i.e. you're a sexist, and they're going to see if it sticks. Not if it sticks in the eyes of other people, but if it sticks in your eyes, if you believe that that's something that you have to react to. Um, the main thing that I would suggest to, to somebody in that situation, again, bad faith accusations in an unofficial capacity, i.e. they're just trying to needle you, sandbag you or whatever, um, just question them. You call me a sexist? How do you know if I'm a sexist? Well, prove. Prove your accusation. Instead of sort of saying that, instead of trying to prove that you're not something, why don't you get them to substantiate their allegations and be withering? Don't just accept it as, a, as a, you know, something that you believe that you have to defend yourself against. Just say, why do you say that? Why don't you give me some evidence? And then they give some evidence and then you say, well, how is that sexist? And you're going to have to explain how it's sexist. And you're going to have to tell me that I meant it in a sexist way and it wasn't just a slip of the tongue. Or you're going to have to, you know, do all kinds of other things. Um, if they're just trying to screw with your mind, screw with theirs. Uh, it, it, it's not that difficult once you size up the situation. Um, you have to be a little bit ruthless to do this because you're sort of making the decision right off the bat. This person is just trying to bug me. This isn't a, this isn't a legitimate case here. And, you know, uh, you end up sort of judging people who are attempting to judge you. But again, if it's just YouTube drama or something like that, It's you know, the stakes really aren't all that high. I have an advantage here. I have a phenomenally thick skin, um, and I'm maddeningly persistent when I've got something, I, a point I want to make. I'll just keep at people until, you know, they usually people just give up on me. Um, and they go on to pick on somebody who's an easier target, somebody who's actually going to show... Uh, that they've been knocked off balance, that they're second guessing themselves, that they're worried about their reputation. Um, but, you know, in the case of sexism, if it's a woman that's sort of trying to, as it were, castrate you, you have to just sort of make it very clear that they've picked on the wrong, uh, they've picked the wrong target here, that you're not so easily cowed by this kind of thing. And um, there's no way you're going to let them get at your testicles. Um, <clears throat> and you have to understand why, say, the stereotypical angry man-hating feminist would want to castrate you. That person believes that you are stronger than they are and they want to make you weak. They want to make you insecure the way they are insecure. Um, don't let them do it. Don't ever let them see that you've become insecure, that you've second-guessed yourself or, or whatever. Understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to rattle you. Don't let them do it. Uh, this is not an easy thing to do. And as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm an eccentric and I'm more or less immune to hostile criticism. I don't really care. Uh, I have my buttons that can be pushed. And I think the people that have watched a lot of my videos know what they are. 
Um, but you know, I generally just, you know, turn to ice when that happens and just drop the entire subject and refuse to talk about it anymore. But when it comes to things like people impugning my, uh, my integrity, and if they're doing it in a halfway decent manner, and, and they're not just people who are notorious for just deliberately smearing people, uh, I tend to go at them and say, why are you doing this? Why do you say this? What makes you think that I'm a racist or a sexist? Uh, you're going to have to show me some evidence of that. And how do you know what kind of a person that I am? And you, you, you put that kind of thing to them in an extremely smug, self-assured manner. And next thing you know, they're the ones who are feeling weaker and stupider. These sorts of um, casual sort of accusations of violation of taboos like sexism or racism or whatever, if they're sort of, I don't know, just used as barbs, um, they backfire horribly if you call the bluff. If somebody calls you a racist and you don't allow yourself to get blindsided by it and you challenge them on it and you challenge them relentlessly on it, um, chances are, A, they've got a track record of doing this to other people, and B, they'll realize once they've attacked you in that way that they're not going to get anywhere in terms of upsetting you. And they'll go pick on somebody else who will explode, who will get worked up, who will get on the defensive, and who will uh, allow it to make them, I hate to say this, make them feel insecure. If someone has an issue about their own femaleness, the dumbest thing that you can do is to play into their hands and become a female at in, in, in the stereotypical worst sense of the word and become somebody who's sort of, I don't know, whiny or, or in other words, unmanly behavior. Now, this is this is really, you know, you're, you're, you're sort of you're playing a psychological game with them, uh, but they're attempting to play one with you. You're, you're, they're trying to say, you're stronger than me, or they're, try, they're sizing up the situation and saying, you're stronger than me, I'm going to make you weaker. And then you say, no, and I'm going to demonstrate that I actually am stronger, more secure, more uh, confident, and in, to an irritatingly smug degree. I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, and I'm going to stare you down. Um... That inevitably does the trick when it comes to someone attempting to smear you with the uh, mud of or the allegation of sexism. Um, what they're essentially doing is they're reversing sexism, and that's what you have to do. You have to sort of say, okay, you're 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 trying you're you 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 believe yourself to be a weak person, and you're trying to and and you see me as a strong person, and you're trying to switch the places here, and you're not going to let them do it. <laughs> You're going to sit there and laugh at them. Oh, yeah, you call me whatever names you want. Anybody can do that. That kind of thing. That's the unofficial way of, uh, that the unofficial sort of argument kind of debate kind of uh, defense against um, that kind of bad faith accusation, that kind of bad faith uh, uh, aversion or, sorry, um, aspersion that you are a taboo violator, you are a sexist pig or a, you know, woman hater or, a, you know, misogynist or something like this. The worst thing you can do is to allow them to make you be as weak as they believe themselves to be. Um, I've always had the opinion that a woman who is secure in her own femininity and knows that she likes being a woman is the easiest woman to get along with. And uh, she may even be a, quite a strident feminist, but at the end of the day, she doesn't hate men. She's not out to get anybody and she doesn't have a personal issue in this. It's not just a vehicle for her to, I don't know, play out her power fantasies or something like this. Um, again, I'm not talking about people doing legitimate, um, work to combat actual sexism in society. I'm talking about a person who you just get the vibe that they're just trying to sandbag you. They can be dealt with and they can be dealt with, uh, with the old adage, the best defense is a good offense. You want to see somebody explode, um, turn the tables on them when they try to denounce you. <laughs> uh, it's not that difficult to do really. Um, uh, again, just keep your wits about you and don't get hooked. Uh, in the official capacity, that's different. That's a, that's, you know, same idea, but the stakes are much higher. I've actually been involved in that kind of thing on the receiving end of that kind of an aspersion in the workplace. And I was able to successfully defend myself against it. And I was actually able to make my accuser rue the day that that person ever uh, decided to mess with me. Now I have an advantage in that I'm, I'm familiar with, um, 
uh, investigations of this sort of thing in workplaces. I know how it works. I know how the um, how the denunciatory process works. I know where burden of proof lies, and I know where um, uh, where the amount of um, the amount of uh, damage that can actually be done, uh, and how much evidence is required. I've actually participated in investigations of people who were alleged to have actually engaged in, not in my case, sexist uh, behavior, but I had to actually investigate someone for allegations of anti-Semitism. And it turns out this person was, and they didn't even realize it, it was an evangelical Christian who kept bugging a a Jewish uh, co-worker to convert to Christianity. Um, So, you know, that was a very difficult one because it's hard to get a person in that situation to understand that what they're doing is wrong. Um, It's just my religion is right, his is wrong, and I'm trying to help him by converting him to my version of rightness. So I know how that works, and I know how how people get investigated, and I know how the decisions are made based on um, what the offense is. Uh, We're talking about sexism. Let's say that I'm being um, accused of something. And there is, say, jail time involved, or I could lose my job, or something like that. Well, as I say, I see that as a declaration of war, and the gloves have to come off. Again, the um, the main thing is uh, good defense, or, or you know, the best defense is a good offense. And what you have to do is go after the person who's accusing you. If they're accusing you spuriously, I'm not talking about an actual case here that you people think may have merits. I'm talking about political correctness at its worst. Somebody who is simply trying to denounce you. Um, <clears throat> even if they're trying to sincerely denounce you, by the way. They think that that's the way that we combat sexism, is anyone who has the slightest whiff of it about them, based on the flimsiest of accusations, is to be ruthlessly struck down in public. I know how to turn the tables on people in, in circumstances like that, and I could probably teach a course on it. Um <clears throat> I've done it, and as I say, I've burned some people's fingers quite badly, and I've made them look really stupid in public. They tried to do that to me, and they regretted ever having messed with me in that way. Um, And what you essentially have to do is you have to understand what you're up against and how serious the situation is. I think a lot of people get sort of thrown off balance by the sheer injustice of that kind of thing. Why why should I have to account for something I haven't done? You know, I I haven't... broken any rules or anything like that. You're going to have to put that idea out of your head from the very beginning. You're in this situation, and now you have to deal with it. Um, If you have to deal with it, then what you do is you go on the attack. And it's not pretty, but it's got to be done sometimes. Um, What I did in my case was, I simply, um, it was a personality conflict in the workplace that really wasn't that big of a deal, but there was allegations of taboo violation in this case in my in my case it was uh, sexism misogyny etc but it looked as though a personality conflict caused someone to get so angry that they filed a charge that they believed would stick simply because of the severity of the charge um you know when you when you when you accuse somebody of violation of you know basic human rights society perks up its ears and listens um but you as the person in the hot seat has, you have one enormous and powerful card in your hand. The stakes for you at the end of the day may not be as high as the stakes are for your accuser. Because remember what I said about the unofficial one, if you turn the tables on the person who's tried to make you look stupid in public just for the sake of, I don't know, sheer devilry or whatever, um, you know, they, they end up getting angry, but they just storm away in a huff and go bug somebody else. It's an easier target. Um, What you do is you understand the fact that the very people who are actually listening to the case here have kind of both of you on trial, your accuser and uh, you. And this, again, is simply... I'm only referring to cases that you believe are spurious. Um, If you think that a a person is just trying to bludgeon you with uh, human rights legislation or human rights regulations in the workplace, and these are effective weapons if people know how to wield them, um, then you're going to have to play as hard as they're playing. Uh, You have to attack their integrity, but you have to do it intelligently. You have to look like a very calm, cool, collected person throughout the entire process, 
Um, in my case, again, it was feminism. That there, sorry, I shouldn't say feminism. It was allegations of sexism on my part or um, misogyny on my part. And you know, you have to sort of say, okay, I'm totally opposed to misogyny. I don't understand how wh- how I ended up here talking to you people uh, who uh, who I you know. I'm glad that uh, these mechanisms are available to us in society, and uh, as a feminist myself, which is actually true, I am a feminist, um, <clears throat> as a feminist myself, I'm glad to see that we have these um, dispute mechanisms or investigatory uh, apparatuses in our, at our disposal, rather. Um, and if inadvertently I've done anything, I am willing to accept uh, any sort of corrective measures because the last thing that I want, even more important than my own future, is uh, my my moral view of myself. I don't want to um, uh, have anyone think that I have done this. And um, I'm willing to listen to anything and cooperate with anyone. Now, you don't say that in, ab- in an abject sort of way that implies an admission of guilt. You just say that you just what you do is you go you say that I'm playing along and I'm and I'm cooperating with the investig- uh, investigatory apparatus that are being used to investigate me. Now, <clears throat> this also assumes that you believe that the people who are investigating you either are acting in good faith or understand the limits of what they're able to do to you. Um Burden of proof is something that is not quite as strong in, say, a human rights case as it would be in, say, a, a criminal case. But it's still there. They have you, you can't just randomly accuse people of things, at least if you've got an actual constituted human rights sort of tribunal or whatever you're facing um, that wants to maintain any sort of credibility. <clears throat> And the ones that that actually have sanctions attached to them generally are answerable uh, in one form or another. And they're answerable to people that, you know, you can appeal to if they sort of nail you. And they don't want to do that because they they, they want to protect the integrity of their investigatory apparatus. So you have to bear that in mind. They have no interest in backing people who are just trying to bludgeon you with uh, with their uh, personal issues. And that's what I did. I simply acted as cool as a cucumber. Uh, I'm an open book. I have nothing to hide. I welcome any and all in investigations into everything. And <clears throat> I um, will answer any questions truthfully and in a timely fashion and, uh, and am at your disposal at all times. Now, you don't say that simply because you're, uh, you're, you're repentant. You're saying that because you want to make sure that they understand that you're willing to play ball. Because if your opponent has accused you of something spuriously, chances are they're the kind of person who shoots from the hip and and they might not look anywhere near as cool and collected as you do in front of the person who's investigating the whole thing. Um, They're they're not going to be questioned in front of you, um, so they might think that they can let loose a bit and say that goddamn son of a bitch, you know, this kind of thing. And, And people who are like that uh, tend to be the first ones to abuse human rights uh, regulations and legislation. Uh, they just let their emotions and their hatred and their uh, uh, their uh, antipathy get the best of them. And uh, usually that comes out in the investigation. This person is just trying to fry me alive. And <clears throat> that's just one little trick. Um, you also, if it's, if, if it's a politically sort of correct group that is investigating you, you can use that against them too. Um, or you can use that against your opponent or against something that may be construed as a kangaroo court. Just because you're in a kangaroo court doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to lose if you play your cards right and keep your wits about you. If you've got a politically correct sort of tribunal type thing, i.e., you know, like a star chamber or something like that, that you end up being caught up in, and, um, and you suspect that it's a foregone conclusion, you can actually use that to your own advantage. What you do is you turn the tables on your accusers and on your on the Grand Inquisitor. I did that as well, or I alleged, or I sort of gave off the vibe that I was quite prepared to do that. Um, <clears throat> the people who were investigating this, I personally to this day believe were reasonable enough people, but with agendas and politically correct attitudes of their own, and you know the 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 sort of the twinge of ethics by denunciation, as I call it. So what I did was I simply said, 
look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm just some nice guy here who's caught up in all this. I'm cooperating with the system. And you imply in an oblique kind of way, in the same way that you're being played with, um, that you people are all victimizing me. I'm on your side. Why are you going after people like me when there's real sexists out there that I want to help you go after? Um, why are you Why are you doing this to me? This is This is terrible. Uh, I can't look at my wife the same way anymore. I, I'm a, you know I can't look at my children the same way anymore. The way that you people are making me feel is absolutely atrocious. Um, I'm not going to overstate what I have to say here, but I would like to see it entered into the into the minutes of this uh, this meeting here that I consider this to be one of the worst experiences of a lifetime. And, and you know, I, I, I got to go to therapy now. I have to, uh, because of all these horrible things that you people have done to me. Um, this isn't very nice to have to play this kind of a game. But again, I tend to see the ones with official sanctions and that you believe are spurious, um, you know, spurious allegations, but with teeth. Uh, I tend to see those as, I take them deadly seriously, and I see them, as I say, as a declaration of war. And if there's going to be casualties on the other side, I'm sorry, there's going to have to be, because, you know, you go for my jugular, and I'm going to defend myself if that means going for your jugular. Although, again, in when, you, when you're sort of a bit of a political war horse like I have been, um, even more useful than actually going for someone's jugular is grabbing them, metaphorically speaking, by the throat, smiling at them, and then releasing your grip. Uh, that person is going to have, you're going to have their respect and their hatred for the rest of their life. Um, nothing is worse than, you know, like what the, the, the native Canadians here used to do. You'd slap your enemy in the middle of a battle instead of hitting him with your weapon. I could have killed you, but I didn't. Um, that's incredibly humiliating, especially somebody who is, whose ego is driving what they're doing which is really what I did and, and what I continue to do whenever I find myself in a kangaroo court-like situation. Um, you can't allow it to throw you off balance. You have to see it just as, a, as you know, a war, and you have to sort of plan your moves with extreme care and extreme deliberation because, A, the stakes are very high, and, B, it's being constituted by the investigative uh, apparatus as something of a strategy game. They have a role to play. They have, they have to investigate complaints. They have to render judgments, or they have to at least recommend whether or not charges are filed or something like this. And you have to sort of play with their minds a little bit as well and sort of say, look, I'm willing to play ball with everybody here. So you can't later on down the line say that I was just some guy who sat here spitting fire at you all day. I, at the very beginning, I made it very clear I was going to cooperate fully with the entire thing. Uh, and, uh, and I did. And I stayed calm and I waited till someone asked me to speak or asked me to defend myself or I, you know, followed proper procedure and stuck to the point and everything like that, that has the effect of intimidating people when they know that you're not rattled. Remember, they're trying to rattle you. <laughs> um, they're walking up to the tiger and yanking him by the tail and hope, hopefully he'll get mad and take a swing at you and then they can say, look, look at what this horrible person just did. Don't do it. Never bite. And turn the tables on them. They've attempted to turn the tables on you. They've they've sort of they've set the stage. I'm a weak person, and I'm going after a strong person who has victimized me. But you can subtly twist things around uh, or turn things around in in a in a case that is obviously bogus um, to make it very clear that you're the one who's actually being victimized here. And because you're on you're you're defending yourself, you're no longer in the position of being the strong guy. You're the little guy being investigated by this tribunal and, and this accuser who is obviously very angry. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot more to discuss. But again, you have to understand that you're dealing with a taboo. And you can't just start saying things like, oh, feminism is bullshit, or, um, or you, this is a goddamn kangaroo court, or I can't believe I'm in this situation. Wrong. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get your neck out of the noose. Um, again, you, you, if your job is at stake, if you're, you know, your custody of your kids is at stake or something like this, you can never pull any punches. Um, you have to, you have to be deliberate. You have to keep to the point and you have to understand what a situation you're in. Railing against the fact that this is happening to you is what 
the politically correct set want you to do. They want you to refuse to accept the um, the, uh, the legitimacy of the court that is that has you on trial. They want you to get upset. They want you to start railing against how you're persecuted by women and everything like this. Don't do that. Um, that if you are innocent, if you have not done what you're being accused of doing, and if um, the body that is investigating you is even remotely um, interested in being a um, uh, a body with um, with any credibility and they are interested in maintaining credibility they will they will essentially do the same thing as happened in the unofficial case they'll say this one will be a tougher nut to crack because I think this guy understands what's happening here and I think he understands what his rights are. And we can't just hope that he's just going to cop a plea here because he feels like he's caught up in some Kafkaesque nightmare. Uh, the guy who loses his cool early on in the process and starts, you know, expressing anger and resentment has already done half of the prosecution, prosecution's job for them. Um, you got to, again, play the secure male who is totally protective of women, who would never harm a flea, um, who uh, totally agrees and is very thankful that this tribunal or whoever they are are here to investigate this horrible accusation that you completely um, are opposed to. But I understand that, you know, just because it didn't happen doesn't mean that it, it, there's no perception that it happened. And I'm willing to assure my, uh, my um, accuser in any way, shape or form that this group sees fit that um, it was a misunderstanding. And I'm willing to go to the nth degree to make sure that they understand that uh, I am no threat to them whatsoever. And I never was. Um, you know, you can't say I'm not talking to that bitch. Fuck her, you know. You you can't do things like that if you if if there are, if things are at stake, uh, if there's actual um, repercussions to what you're doing, um, or repercussions to what's going on, you can't do that. Uh, you got to keep your wits about you. So yes, this is related to taboos and how taboos can be abused. Um, taboos, if you ask me, are the opposite of ideals, and they're just as toxic. Um, I find it interesting that a lot of people might sort of abolish all their ideals uh, or, you know, on, on religious grounds, uh, but they won't go after the taboos either. Or they will make full use of the taboos. They may not believe in anything, but they certainly uphold all of the taboos. Um, that's, you know, political correctness gone mad. The the moral relativist or the cultural relativist who doesn't believe in any of the values of his or her own culture, uh, but fully supports all of the taboos. And um, again, I guess that's a species of negative utilitarianism, isn't it? It's just fighting harm instead of actually promoting good. Um, <clears throat> but again, it can be, it, you, you can defend yourself against bogus claims. The problem is when people think, I shouldn't have to do this. Well, there's a lot of things in life that we probably shouldn't have to do. Welcome to the real world.